If you look at the App Store or the Play Store, you'll find countless apps that claim to help you learn languages quickly and efficiently, but which ones are really worth investing your time into? And I say time because even if the apps are free, even if you're not putting any money into uh, purchasing the app, you will be putting a lot of hours into it because language learning is a long and protracted process. So in this video, I wanted to list some of the apps that I have found useful and some that I think are worth investing your time into. The first app I recommend to everyone is Link. And I've used Link for a number of languages and I think it's a really powerful tool and also a very simple tool. It's basically just a tool that allows you to read a text and listen to the audio at the same time. And it allows you to quickly look up definitions for unknown words. So when you look at the text, you'll see some words in blue, and that means it's a word you haven't seen on Link before. You can click on it, uh, use an online dictionary to select the definition you want, and it'll save that definition for later. So the next time you see the word, it'll be in yellow, and you can see the same definition that you saved before. It also has a system for storing all of your known vocabulary. So as you see a word more and more, and as you get more comfortable, you can upgrade its rating from unknown to known. And that'll mean that the color will slowly go from yellow to white. Uh, Link has a lot of languages. So for most people, I think it has the language that you'll want to learn. But one of the greatest benefits of it is that it has a massive library of pre-recorded and pre-transcribed content available. You can see podcasts and videos and interviews, all these things that people have already uploaded. And in addition, you can upload your own materials and you can even import videos straight from YouTube. So Link will take the subtitle file, take the audio and put them into a nice package that you can use for studying. The next app I want to talk about is Anki. Anki is a spaced repetition flashcard app. And that basically means that you can create flashcards and Anki will show it to you just before you forget it. So it uses an algorithm to show you the cards uh, at the best time for optimal memorization. Now, people have mixed feelings regarding flashcards. Some people swear by them and say that it's a fantastic tool that has helped them learn languages. And other people think it's a bit of a waste of time to spend so much time making flashcards when you could be doing other more productive things. And I can see uh, valid reasons for both arguments. Basically, what I'd say is it's up to you. If you like learning flashcards and if you think flashcards help you personally, then you should use them. If you don't think they help you and you don't like doing them, then don't do them. At the end of the day, it's not what I say or what other people say. It's whatever thing, whatever method works for you that you should use. Anki in particular, I quite like it. I use it a lot. I try not to use it to learn new words. So I try not to download sets that other people have made. I just use Anki to remind me of words that I've previously learned. So if I hear a new word and I want to remember it, I want to sort of add it to my active vocabulary, I'll make a flashcard for it. And throughout the day, I'll just go through all the flashcards in my dead time, just sort of reminding me of all the sentences I've seen before. One great benefit of flashcards is it allows you to use your dead time very effectively. So if you have a couple of minutes while you're waiting for the lift, or if you have maybe 10 minutes while you're sitting on the bus, you can just pull out Anki, do some flashcards, remind your brain of some useful sentences and go about your day. So I try and get all of my flashcards done just in my dead time. So Link and Anki are more like tools that you can use in your language learning, but they're not so much structured courses that will actually like, actively teach you a language. For those kind of apps, there are some well-known ones like Duolingo, and I don't really use many of them, but one that I have used recently is Speakly. Speakly has only seven or eight languages, I think, uh, but it's really a well-structured and I think a well-designed app. It introduces the most commonly used words first. And one thing that I really like about it is it doesn't explain everything. It just kind of shows you lots of sentences and their translation. And if you want, you can click on the translation for each word. And yeah, it just shows you these sentences, shows you common words in usage and tries to just help you get used to the language more than actively teaching you it. If you want grammar rules and if you want it to sort of explain a bit more, there is also a section where you can look up some grammar explanations, but it's not a core part of how the app works. When I found out about Speakly, I just wanted to test it out. So I, I opened up the Finnish course and just did about 10 minutes a day. And yeah, I really like how it's laid out. And I found that 
He was pretty quickly able to teach me how to say a lot of very basic things. Out of these more structured course style apps, I would say Speakly is, is a good option. But again, it only has a few languages, so it's only really gonna be useful if you're, if you're learning one of those languages. But hopefully they expand more in the future. Okay, the next app I'm gonna talk about is one that I think many people will not have heard of because it's not really a language learning app, it's a radio app, and that is SBS Radio. So SBS is a broadcaster in Australia, and they offer news reports in, I think, 60 or more different languages. SBS Radio app is a great resource if you're looking for high quality uh, audio recordings. There are some clips which are maybe five minutes long, some maybe 15 or 20 minutes long. You can listen to full uh, radio broadcasts, but it's a great library of audio resources about current affairs. And I think if you're Australian as well, it'll be interesting because you can hear sort of news that's relevant to you and things that are interesting that you will want to listen to anyway. So yeah, this is a great resource for, for anyone looking to learn uh, any of the 60 or more languages that are offered, uh, even if you're not from Australia. Okay, another app which is not specifically a language learning app, but is more of a general productivity app is Notion. So I use Notion as a sort of general home base for keeping everything organized. If you want to have to-do lists or if you want to track your study sessions or even if you want to create databases of vocabulary and phrases, you can basically do anything with Notion. I recommend this generally, not just for language learning, just for general productivity and organization, uh, but specifically for language learning, it can be a really useful tool. And I think I'll make a video in more detail about how I use Notion in the future to show you a bit more in depth, but I recommend looking into it and yeah, trying it out for yourself. Okay, the next one is italki. And I think most language learners will have heard of italki. It's probably the biggest tutoring platform on the internet. So yeah, with italki, you can easily find tutors for basically any language that you want to learn. Most tutors will be pretty reasonably priced, there are some professional teachers and some also just community teachers who uh, will you know, offer their services for a small price. And yeah, it's a great way to start speaking. Generally, I will learn a language for a few months, try and get myself a decent level of comprehension, and then I'll try and start speaking with a tutor to um, sort of translate that knowledge into a speaking ability and also to ask a lot of questions and to round out some of the mistakes that I will make. So italki is a great resource for that. Italki used to have a really good system for finding language partners as well. So to find someone who's learning your native language and who speaks your target language. But they changed the system a while back and it's become a little more difficult to find people to practice with. But there is still a function where you can make a post where you say, I'm looking for a speaker of this language to be a language partner with me. So it is still possible to use italki to find a language partner. And to finish off, I just wanted to mention some very good dictionaries that I've found. So the number one dictionary that I recommend is Reverso Context. So it's a context dictionary. So when you look up a word, it won't tell you a long-winded definition. It'll just show you lots of example sentences. As far as I know, these sentences come from things like subtitles and a lot of them are not computer-generated translations. They're translations that have already been verified. Um, I'm not sure if all the sentences are like that, but as far as I know, most of the sentences are pretty natural and you can pretty much trust them to be, uh, to be accurate translations. Reversal context is available in a number of languages. So for most of the common languages that you learn, it will be there. Uh, I want to mention a couple of other dictionaries for specific languages. So for Korean, you need to have Naver Dictionary. Naver Dictionary is just has everything you'll ever want. So you need that if you're learning Korean. Uh, for Chinese, there are lots. Uh, line Dictionary is a good one, and there are plenty others. But yeah, Line Dictionary is, I think, also run by Naver, but it's set up in the same way. It shows you just lots of example sentences. There's also these websites, tr.ex and Glossby, which are also context dictionaries, but they have a lot more languages than Reverso Context. However, the downside with these are, I don't think the sentences are quite as accurate as reverse of context. Um, I could be wrong, they could be okay, but these are still good to see some examples of how a word is used in a sentence. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't really trust it as much as reverse of context. So the last website is Wiktionary. Um, Wiktionary is the dictionary form of Wikipedia, and it lets you look up almost any word in almost any language. You can see etymologies, conjugations, 
sometimes it has example sentences, uh, but for a general dictionary, I'd say this is one of the best. If you're interested in etymology and seeing links between related languages or seeing how vocabulary is shared between different languages, Wiktionary can also kind of point you towards some of those links, which I find personally very inter interesting. But yeah, in general, it's a good tool for finding definitions of words. And also for Romance languages and languages with lots of declensions, you can find, for most words, how they are declined or how they're conjugated. Okay, I hope this video was interesting and useful for you guys. If you have any apps that you want to recommend, make sure you leave them in the comments. And let me know what other videos you want to see, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.